Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. In this video, we will learn some more other selectors that are available in the CSS. So, first selector which we will try to learn is about the grouping selectors. So, what is this grouping selector? A selector doesn't have to match only a single element. You can also group the multiple selector by separating them with commas. So this for this one we will be using it as we will call it as a grouping selector. For example, let's say that we are having an h1 element. Okay. So this is an heading one element. And we are having another element h2 heading 2. H2 I am giving. And let's say that we are having h3 also heading 3 element. So we are having three different types of elements. There is nothing but h1, h2, and h3. Now what I want to do, I want to apply, let's see this one in the output, I will show you h1, h2 and h3. If you see this one in the Chrome browser, yeah, so this is the Chrome browser, we are able to see, actually this one something is applying, okay, let's see this one on. And here if you try to see, there are three different levels of heading, of, heading elements, that is h1, h2 and also the h3. So now if you go to the index.html, so we are able to see h1, h2, h3, right? Now I want to apply color red to this h1, h2 and h3. Let's say that how we will apply for h1. We will apply this one as color red. And h2, we will apply this one as color red. So this is the normal position. So if I want to apply for, for three of them, the color red. So the same styles I want to apply to these three elements, h1, h2 and h3. So different elements. We are trying to apply the same declarations or same CSS rules. If you see the output, <coughs> we are able to see the color red for these three elements. Fine. But the problem here is we are duplicating the code here. For the three elements, we are writing the same styles. So now we can make use of this grouping selector. These are called as a grouping selectors. Now we are trying to group these all selectors into a single, single selector. How we can do is, so we can remove this H2 and H3. So here we are having, we need to apply these styles to h1, h2 and h3. So I can use a comma oriented h1, comma h2, comma h3. So now this is how we call it as a grouping selector. So we are grouping the different types of selectors. Here not only the h2, you can also use the class selector also. So class also you can use it. So now we are trying to use the grouping selectors. So let's say that here I am having a my class. So h2 I am not using, right? For the h2 we are having a my class let's say so i can use i can call this ht element instead of using this element selector i can use the class selector so now we have grouped with these three types of selectors h1 my class and h3 and we are trying to apply the color red now if you see the output the same output we are able to see it but uh, same thing same output we are able to see but we have used the grouping selector instead of writing the three css separately we have grouped the selectors so that we are writing only one css so this is all about this is about the grouping selector the different types of selectors you can use the id selector or the attribute selector what we have learned previously all these selectors you can group it here with a comma oriented <coughs> so that is the about the grouping selector next selector what i want to tell you is the pseudo classes and the pseudo element selectors css provides useful selector types that focus on a specific platform state like when an element is hovered, structures inside an element or parts of an element. So these type of things also CSS provides and useful selector types. That means when an element is hovered, so state. So what you can say is the state of an element. We can also style the state of an element at what state it is. Let's say that HTML elements finds themselves in various states. Either because they are interacted with or one of their child elements is in a certain state. For example, let's say that an HTML element could be hovered with the mouse pointer by a user or a child element could be could also be hovered by the user. For these situations, what we'll use it, we'll use the hover pseudo class. Let's say that I am having an anchor link. So here I will be using an anchor link. AHREF is equal to I am having something and I can use a Google home page or something like this. So now we are having an anchor link here google home page we are able to see this google home page now when i hover in this one when i hover on this one when i hover on this link i want to get an outline or border or something like that i want to get it 
so what i can do here so i can apply when i want to forward it so i want to make it as color red so if you see here i can hover here it's converted into the color red so that means when i hover into this element using the mouse pointer this anchor element is converted into red color so that means that state is different so that means that state the anchor element state is mouse is hovered on that one that is it is on that state so that state we can take it as a hover and also i can apply something like outline also outline i can use it one pixel dotted green so which or which or i want it i can use it now if i try to hover it here so i'm able to get it dotted hover also i can able to get it so not only like this there are a couple of pseudo classes available in the css nth child so the, these are pseudo classes what i can say is these are all separated using the single column okay so if any state if you want to mention it so this is divided with a single column so these are all pseudo classes we'll try to learn about this more about the pseudo classes in next in next videos so just you need to know that these are also some of the selectors available so nth child so if you want to select an nth child so you can also use that one all so different different types of pseudo classes are available the another type of selector which i want to tell you is the pseudo element the pseudo elements differ from the pseudo classes because instead of responding to the platform state they act as if they are inserting a new element in the css pseudo elements are also syntactically different from pseudo classes because instead of using the single column we will be using the double column for this one so these are called as a pseudo element so pseudo element pseudo classes means so they will target the state of an element so the in which state it is <coughs> that state we can target that element whereas the pseudo elements they act as a differently they act as something like they are inserting a new element into the css so they will insert a new element into the css not only the exactly those things so we have also other pseudo elements which doesn't act as a inserting i will try to show you but more generally we will be using the pseudo elements to insert a new item or new content into the css so generally we will use it with a double column for example let's say that i am having a div element let's say that i am having a div element so i am having a oh sorry i am having a div element so this one i will use my element example and here i am using something like this is div so for this one i want to insert some content before this one so what i can do is before this content i before this element this is div i want to insert some content to this one so what i can do is here is so we got it my element okay and we need to use the double column and here you will be able to see some couple of pseudo elements in the visual studio code there are some options available so now i want to you i want to insert some content right so before so i can use this before and i can insert using the content property and i can write it here prefix hyphen that's it now if you try to see the output in this one here see the prefix hyphen has been added before the content so like this we can use this so this is inserting a new content into the html not through the html so we are inserting through the css so here we are having only the this is given the html but through the css also we can insert the content like this not only this one we can also use the after okay now this one will be inserted afterwards if you try to see the output see prefix has been added at the end of this content so like this these are, these are some like this there are some things before and after we can use it like this so end of an element we can add it pseudo elements are, are not only limited to inserting a content you can also use them to target specific parts of an element so if you want to uh, target the specific parts parts not the entire element specific parts of an element also we can target we can target using the pseudo elements for example suppose you have a list so you uh, for example let's say that we are having a list so here in the index.html let's say that i am having a list here i am having li so i can say heading one or something like that or list one so i can use list two and i can use list three and i can use list four so that so this is a list item so if i try to see the output here we are able to see list one list two list three list four and a dot was there as the prefix for each list item 
so now if i want to target so pseudo elements can also be used to target specific parts of an element so specific parts of an element means for here i want to target this dot okay this dot so this dot also we can target it using something like marker so there are some c couple of pseudo elements available we'll try to discuss those things of course i will try to do a separate session but i am trying to tell you the different types of selectors what are the selectors available and now here i can do color of red now if you see the output see here only the specific parts of an element i am able to convert it into red color so like this not only this one for example if i am selecting here so the selection is coming in a background color of blue color i can also use something like selection so i can use like this selection so if you want you can also use a particular element also i can use background black and i can use color of white the text will be color of white and background color of black if you try to see the output here if i am trying to select here see the selection of this one also i am able to change it to black color and white color so this is how we will be using the pseudo elements in the css now what we have learned we have learned about the grouping selectors so which we can group the multiple multiple selectors we can use it and also about the pseudo classes which which can affect the state of an element so if you want to target the state of an element means we can use the pseudo classes and if you want to insert a new content into the element or otherwise you want to target a specific parts of an element so we can use the pseudo element the difference between the pseudo class and the pseudo element is for the pseudo class we will be using a single colon and the for pseudo elements we will be using a double colon and the old browsers actually they don't support the double colon so they will be targeted using the single colon only but you can use the double colon it's not a problem if you want to target the older browsers also for pseudo elements also sometimes it will target with a single selector only so this is these are all about the something like grouping selectors pseudo selector and pseudo element or some of the selectors in the next section we will we'll learn some of the complex selectors we'll try to learn it hope you understood about these selectors if you have any doubts or any sessions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you